Donald Trump is now just hours away from a series of big meetings on Capitol Hill. The presumptive nominee is set to meet with top Republican leaders in both the House and the Senate tomorrow. He'll also meet separately with RNC Chairman Ryan Priebus and House Speaker Paul Ryan, who has said he's not yet ready to support Trump. But ahead of those meetings, House Republicans met with their weekly conference and for the first time since Trump, be Trump became their party's likely nominee. Afterwards, Speaker Ryan telling reporters it's important to unite the GOP in order to win the White House. And then he said this about Trump. These are conversations we're going to have. I don't really know him. Uh, I met him once in person in 2012. We had a very good conversation in March on the phone. Um, we just need to get to know each other. And we, as a leadership team, um, are enjoying the fact that we have a chance to meet with him. Meantime, Trump is reversing a suggestion he made on Sunday that he may not back House Speaker Ryan as convention chair. He's a very good man. He wants what's good for the party. And I think we're going to have very positive results. Did you and I'd love, frankly, for him to stay and be chairman. I think he loves this party. He loves this country. And he wants to see something good happen. And I think we're going to do better if we're unified. All right, so what do, you th what do you make of the change in tone coming from <laughs> Trump on Paul Ryan? Well, I, I think Trump is very savvy and he's very clever. Look, we've all known that his method with negotiation is to make it clear that he's willing to walk away from the table. Mm -hmm. So when he tells Paul Ryan, hey, maybe you don't have to be the convention chair if you don't like me, I think that sent the signal that showed Ryan that, look, Trump wants to work with him, but he's also going to hold a tough line. He's not going to be this person who now all of a sudden, as the nominee, feels compelled to follow everyone's lead. Remember, he got here largely without any establishment support. That being said, I think both Trump and Ryan, their common denominator, which you have to find in a negotiation, mm -hmm. is they do want to win. They do want to be Hillary Clinton, and they know that you do that by uniting the party. Ryan's point, though, cannot be underestimated that you can't somehow pretend or hold a press conference or a pep rally and say, we're all one happy yes, family. Yes, you can. They've always done that. Well, but <laughs> it, it won't work. You can do that stylistically. You can do that for maybe a news cycle or two. But I do think there are deep um, concerns about some positions. And I think Trump is ready to help address them. So perhaps and move that goes back forward. to Paul Ryan's strategy. I can't, I can't just support him as our nominee but right now. But why not? They've always done it that way. Why not? Why can't you just support him? If the people have chosen this candidate, why can't you just get behind him? He doesn't have any competitors anymore. I'm well, just confused. And it wouldn't matter who he is. Right? It has never mattered until now. So, Tony, what's different? Look, I, well, Trump is different. I mean, he's come clearly from way outside any of the normal kind of establishment of the Republican Party. And by establishment, I don't just mean the ruling class. I mean, he's not a bona fide long term conservative with a record of fighting for certain things that the Republican Party since Reagan has identified as important. Um, okay. ta taxes, um, obviously, foreign policy and stuff. Here's the difference, though. I think Trump basically understands that he has the upper hand here. And I think I think he's smartly beginning to play it, but while he has the upper hand and has, he also has the burden, and that's where I think we're going to have to watch him now till the convention, see what he does. It yeah. sounds reasonable, Speaker Ryan saying, you know, what? I don't know him very well. I need to get to know him better. Yeah. You have made it very clear your reservations about Donald Trump, and Paul Ryan has said the well, same. I don't. I need to know him better. Do you think if Paul Ryan gets on board, do you think it's possible Meghan McCain could? Well, I think if I trust Paul Ryan implicitly, and I was very grateful that he was giving people like me cover that still have reticence about Donald Trump. Let me give you an example, Harris Faulkner, because you're asking I why love it now. I uses my last Harris name. Faulkner, I guess. I don't know why I just said that. I, I know you personally, but anyway. Ms. Jackson, if you're <laughs> Ms. Faulkner. Uh, anyway, so right now there is a white nationalist that's a delegate for Donald Trump in California. People like me, I don't want to be associated with anything like that ever. He has said incendiary things. He's attached to things that I am not comfortable with, not the values that I believe the Republican Party should be, not the values I think the Republican Party should espouse mm -hmm. uh, in the national election. And I think there are things like that that we still have concerns about. But if we have Paul Ryan and other leaders meeting with Donald Trump and singing Kumbaya, this is a complete tone think, shift. Just let me finish one second. It's a complete tone shift. Just a few days ago, Donald Trump was saying, some Republicans can sit out this election eight years. We don't need you. This is a complete shift in a mere few days. 
because maybe he's realizing we do have to unite. On top of that, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders are complete disarray on the Democratic side, so we have an opportunity to beat that. Well, they, they have an opportunity and they have a need. Dagan, I, I, I want to get your response to this because you and I, the nerds that we are, we've been talking about these exit <laughs> polls all morning. And this one was really interesting. This is coming out of Nebraska and West Virginia, where GOP voters feel betrayed by the Republican Party and angry with the federal government. In Nebraska, Nebraska, 63% of the Republican right. voters, West Virginia, 49%. Doesn't this just define this campaign, it this gives election? Donald Trump an excuse for not uh, quickly kissing the ring, if you will, mm -hmm. and, and making amends with uh, Paul Ryan, because Paul Ryan started it last week, and he seemed genuinely shocked that Donald Trump was the presumptive nominee, quite mm -hmm. frankly. I think and, he was. And, and, and there was a little bit of that, because when he said, I don't really know him that well, that was today. He didn't have that more genuine response last week, which I didn't think was uh, authentic for mm -hmm. Paul Ryan. He said, I'm not Second, there yet. Right, I'm not there yet. Second thing, though, as a voracious consumer of reality television shows, <laughs> I think... I, you, you never put down drama, and I think you don't. You never want to like mend a fissure, uh -huh. or you never want to like get over a dust up too quickly because then people <laughs> lose interest. If they come together, doesn't that make people that's pay even closer attention yeah. to the unity in the Republican yeah. Party? So that's interesting because that's a juxtaposition, as Megan uh, talked about, to what's happening now, particularly since last night. Uh, what's happening on the other side of the aisle. I mean, Bernie Sanders taking West Virginia, mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders taking the news cycle, if you will, today, um, with some of the strides that he's picked up. It is a juxtaposition to that. And again, who would ever have thought that Republicans, based on 17 in the beginning competing, would be getting it together a little bit faster, maybe even a whole lot, before the Democrats. It gives them wind at their sails. It gives them a positive message. And maybe it is this dramatic dance. I'm a fan of dancing, and I'm with you on the reality. <laughs> but, 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 but that that's why the leadership cannot squander this opportunity mm. to try to build Are a constructive relationship. I, I don't think so. You have Senator Corker, very well respected member of the Senate, who's come out, Senator Cornyn, all saying, look, Donald Trump's our nominee. We have to learn how to work with him. Um, I think Paul Ryan, you're absolutely right, Dagan, initially came out and it was this kind of awkward, I'm not there yet, I'm marinating on it. It sounded kind of small ball for such an intellectual heavyweight like Paul Ryan, who, to your point, Megan, has all of this credibility with the conservative Here's movement. Here's why they need to get together. going to be very Billion important. Dollars cover. Mm -hmm. He's giving politicians cover who aren't there yet. He's giving con people that are live and die by conservative values who think that some things like I just brought up, white nationalists being a part yeah, of the Trump party. Campaign is addressing Let me that. finish. Let me finish. Okay. okay. No that makes me uncomfortable. That makes me uncomfortable. Okay. But he's no longer and a delegate. But the fact that you ever was to begin with, there were no white well, nationalists uh, on my father's campaign. Well, I don't think he was being recruited by the Trump I'm campaign. just right. telling they you, need Paul to get together Ryan, for the money, is do, he did this originally yeah. for cover, yeah. and now they are playing nice. So, so if there's any vitriol or anger, I understand why Paul Ryan did it, and it's to help people like me, All right. which I think is leadership. Wait, yeah, I just point on the say, money, though, is Bill, I, they, Trump has to raise at least a billion dollars. Yeah. Both Barack Obama and Mitt Romney spent more than that right. in the last election. Sure. So, you, you know, you can only do it if We've got to get to the other side of the equation. Here.